Hello and welcome to another episode of Gotham Sound TV.、Uh, I am very happy to be here with Nick Houston. Hello, Nick. Hi, Peter. We are talking about our NAB 2019 wrap up.、Um, we have lots of notes and lots of pictures to share with you.、I'm、very excited.、Um, and we can take lots of questions live if anybody has any. Absolutely.、Uh, I want to start、um, by just.、Um, Taking a moment to acknowledge、uh, the passing of Jean-Pierre Boviala of Aton,、um, you know it was it was a really、um, it was an intense、uh, experience to be at NAB and to look around and to realize how much of the current technology、um, would not have been possible in that form without、uh, the efforts and creative、uh, genius of Jean-Pierre.、Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was.、Um, I, I really,、uh, you know, I really enjoyed knowing him, and, and、um, you know, whenever I talk about elegance of something, it's because of his influence on me. Yeah,、um, he was a huge part of of us in the beginning of Gotham in the beginning, and a big influence on me.、Um, I、uh, was very fortunate to make a, a small doc with Christina Wittich、um, in Grenoble, where we got to spend the day with him.、Um, So yeah. Anyways, check that out. We'll put the link in the description.、Um, what do we want to start with? Well, I guess、um, it was a huge year、uh, for NAB. I feel like this is the best NAB I've ever been to.、Mm -hmm. Granted, I haven't been to that many,、uh, but you know, in the last four or five years,、mm -hmm. there were certainly a lot of new products.、Um, one thing I'll say is that most, if not all, of the things that、uh, we're mentioning here, we're going to have in our store. Uh, for our Gotham Expo on Saturday, May the fourth. So, if there's something that you're interested in getting hands on,、uh, you know, looking, touching, feeling, experiencing,、uh, come to the Expo on May fourth, and there'll be a link to that below.、Um, but I think we should start with the the flagship、uh, recorders that came out. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of big ones. Yeah.、Um, so, in alphabetical order,、uh, mm -hmm. we'll talk about three that we looked at.、Um, the first one that we looked at was the Sound Devices Scorpio. Um, yeah, which here's the Sound Devices Scorpio.、Uh, it's the new flagship product from、uh, from Sound Devices. You know, my impression of it is it's it's everything they've ever done.、Uh, the best features of it all jammed into a box about the size of a 688. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, I think the only possible complaint I could have、mm -hmm. uh, with it not having you know used it in the field yet. Um, is that it doesn't have to be so small. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> uh, you know, it's I get worried. It's a lot of heat in a small amount of space.、Yep. But、um, no, it's like not much bigger than like a a, a, a book. Yeah. You know, like a commercial book. So yeah. Yeah, and it's got、uh, you know it's got twelve mixing pots and twelve trim pots on the front. So they squeezed it all in there with the、uh, the LED rings, which I thought was cool.、Mm -hmm. um, it can record thirty two input tracks from either analog. Uh, digital AES or Dante. Well, and I will、um, amend that a little bit、mm -hmm. because it's it can record all 32 inputs plus a couple of mix tracks. Plus I mean, four, right?、Yeah. So 36、yep. is the total track count, which is really smart. I don't think the other you know quote unquote big re big recorders can do that. They can you know record their inputs and then replace some of them with a mix track. Right. Yeah. Yep. This doesn't do that.、Um, internal hard drive.、Um, And, and if you look at the sound of the video we made about the Scorpio, it lasted a whole lot longer than I ever expected it to. There's a lot of little things in there that we won't get into. Yeah.、Um, but I think the internal hard drive is pretty exciting.、Uh, I think dual power supplies and actually three different power options is、mm -hmm. pretty exciting.、Mm -hmm. uh, and then also the fact that they're going to start using、uh, open source control surfaces using MCU. Yeah,、um, MIDI control. There's,、uh, there's,、uh, from what I understand, there's going to be an API,、um, and you know they're going to support、uh, Icon,、mm -hmm. um, but I think that will not preclude other others from making their own custom solutions, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, and I was the one thing I was surprised with this, and I'm sure we don't have a picture of this, but the Icon was surprisingly well built. It was metal.、Yes. There was a trim pot on、yes. each、uh, on each fader bank. And、yes. um, you know the idea that it was expandable. I was shocked that something、uh, that inexpensive could be that functional for what we needed to be. Yeah, absolutely.、Uh, no, it's it's well done, and it's got a separate display unit, and it's even got like a little expander sidecar.、Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to see sixteen faders at once, you could. I presume 
Um, you could even expand it beyond that, but certainly it's bankable. Right. Um, and that's one thing that I, I've heard from a couple of different mixers is, well, I want to, I want to have control over more than eight faders. You can. It's right. bankable. They're motorized faders. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's great. Yep. And, yeah, and for the days where you're just <coughs> doing eight tracks, you've just got your eight faders in front of you. Right. And then if you are somebody that wants to have all the faders, you just bring out your add-on board, and then you've got 16 or 24 or 32 all on different boards. Then, you know, you need a bigger sound cart. Well, I mean, this has come up a couple of times. Like, you could have the expander pack on a slide-out drawer. Mm -hmm. And yep. then, you know, you know, a slide out drawer from your slide out drawer. Right. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. And then, you know, there's your eight faders if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, th I think it's, it's, uh, it's really smart. Um, so let's, let's uh, move on to the Zaxcom Nova, uh, which has certainly been another one of the exciting new recorders and kind of a, a, one of the favorites coming out of NAB. Um, so the cool thing about the Nova uh, is that it has two of the Zaxcom QRX212 receivers built in, which allows it to receive four transmitters uh, directly inside the box. So no wires, no antenna distribution, no powering of the modules, just straight inside the Nova, uh, which is pretty cool. Yes, um, and along those lines, um, it's certainly a no-brainer if you're looking for a back a backup Zaxcom recorder mm -hmm. um, or an over-the-shoulder Zaxcom recorder. Yeah. Um, but Glenn mentioned that they will eventually come out with AES inputs in place of those modules, mm -hmm. so that you could, in theory, use any manufacturer's wireless receivers there in in its place without giving up physical inputs. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's nice. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that he mentioned was these uh, these rotary faders. <clears throat> uh, they're not hard pots like they, they've had in previous generations. They're actually multifunction. And uh, I don't know if you got a chance to play with them, but they're they're surprisingly smooth. Yeah, we had a long discussion about them, and they are they feel great. And I said, oh, Glenn, if only they could be a push button, because that would sort of like allow uh, one more level of control. Mm -hmm. And his argument, which I agree with, is the push button one, uh, the push button rotary encoders don't have that feel, and that feel is really key. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do want to go back to the sound devices for oh, just sure. one second. I'm sorry. Yeah, backwards. Um, backwards. Uh, we're really testing uh, the little Isadora video mixer that we made. Um, anyways, uh, one cool thing about its Dante input mm -hmm. not being limited in any way mm -hmm. um, is you have 16 inputs um, of analog I.O. or 16 analog inputs and 32 Dante inputs. So in theory, you could um, have two machines on your cart mm -hmm. um, and one goes all Dante. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know you can your your second one would be a backup of every single track. Yep. Anyways, no, I think I think that's cool. Um, all right, going back to the Nova, uh, yep. other things that people have liked um, are that that there's two uh, easily accessible CF cards. Uh, well, that's definitely an upgrade over mm. uh, over some of the previous Zaxcom recorders. I like that. Um, it's got the built-in Zaxnet, which is great, and there's the antennas on the front. The thing that I really liked. Um, was that they got away from the the touch screen and Glenn mentioned that it um, you know he thought it was too small for a touch screen yes. but they added these function buttons yes um, those which I thought I think are, are always a great thing and so have. the screen will actually change um, and make those buttons into into soft uh, buttons depending mm -hmm. on what you um, what you want what you're doing contextually right. yeah yep. it's yep. great exactly so navigation should be a lot uh, a lot faster and more yep. intuitive intuitive and, yeah absolutely and you're not going to be digging through things as much and it maintains that water resistance and also um, you don't lose brightness when you go to a touch you know touch screens have that layer of touch mm -hmm. uh, sensitivity in front of them so yeah, yeah it's great it's a great it's great design it's, it's come so far yeah yeah it's, it's definitely nice. one of the best things we've uh, that Zaxcom has put out ever, which makes sense because it's their new, uh, their newest and latest and greatest. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think that's anything else about the Nova. Well, I, it's not necessarily about the Nova specifically, and I don't know if this is more of a wireless thing. But did he show you the the Raspberry Pi web page uh, thing? About? I heard about it and not see it. All right. I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but uh, he showed it to me uh, <laughs> at the booth. Uh -huh. um, it's a little Raspberry Pi that uh, basically hosts a web page mm -hmm. um, and then talks uh, into the IFB 200 or into any, I presume, any Zaxnet mm -hmm. capable product. Um, but it means you have full control over the wireless um, system 
with, over with Wi-Fi, an uh -huh. yeah, with an app or, or any anything that can um, you know hook into um, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really um, pretty amazing. It's a great GUI. It really works great on a tablet. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope if I was allowed to talk about this, that um, that's okay. And if I'm not, that this puts pressure yeah. on him to get it out there because it's really good. Comments redacted. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's move on to the F6. Uh, so this is kind of, um, it's more exciting than you think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, when you look at this recorder, um, you know, it's not going to make sense to a lot of people. And mm -hmm. in, in, well, first of all, let's say what it is. Sure. It's, it's uh, six inputs. Mm -hmm. um, it's time code. Yep. It's battery powered. Mm -hmm. It's wave files. Yep. Um, you well, know, what kind of wave broad, files broadcast wave files? Uh, uh -huh. I'm gonna get there. Okay. Um, and you know, in in a very small form factor, mm -hmm. um, for you know, under a thousand dollars. I don't think they've exactly settled on a price, but well right. under a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on inside the hood, under the hood, though, um, is dual A to D converters. Which we've seen, we've seen. You know, it's in Electro's transmitters, which uh, Carl uh, was telling me about. Larry mm -hmm. Fisher actually was telling yeah. me about. Um, it's uh, it's been around the industry for a long, long time. What's um, different is that this now has a way to contain all of that audio data because it can record natively in 32-bit floating point. Mm -hmm. um, now we've seen a, a demo file uh, from this. Uh, and it's really um, impressive. Um, yeah. you know, the, the, the file was recorded basically like 60 dB below what it should have been. Um, yeah, you couldn't even see the waveform when we brought it into uh, Reaper. Right. It's and, just gone. And then you just normalize it and it's a full waveform. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was voice. I mean, there was, we weren't judging for, you know, it wasn't like an orchestral recording. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is if somebody had turned that into us as editors, um, we wouldn't have questioned the quality of that track. It sounded quite right. good. Yep. It sounded normal. There was no hiss. Yeah, there was no noticeable amplification noise or anything like that. Yeah, and it was effectively bringing it up 60 dB. Mm -hmm. And then we had a file that was recorded the exact opposite where it was overdriven. Right. And that was able to be brought down in the exact same way. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, it's interesting. It records both a 24-bit uh, broadcast wave file and a 32-bit floating point broadcast wave file. Um, so um, it, it's not like you're giving something up or you're running the risk of, of incompatibility. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's very very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a little bit um, funny in the sense that the 32-bit floating point file is is post fade and the 24-bit file is is pre fade. Okay. Um, and that's because it doesn't matter. The fader position doesn't matter. Uh huh. That makes sense. Yeah. So. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, shipping June. I thought they said or. or I think it um, says mid. Yeah, mid June. Yeah. Mid June or mid May, one of the two. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's move on to mixers. I know you got Real a chance. I just wanted to uh, wrap that up in terms of saying the uh, Scorpio eighty nine ninety five uh, on release at quarter two sometime, so before mm -hmm. the end of June we're hoping. Yep. And the uh, Nova forty nine ninety five uh, hearing early summer. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you stopped by the Allen and Heath booth and checked out some of their SQ series. Yeah. Um, so you know this is not necessarily new for NAB. It's mm -hmm. new to us. Um, you know, our we are now full on um, Allen and Heath D Live dealers and SQ mm -hmm. dealers, a whole line. Um, you know, the SQ five in particular, I think, is a really interesting compact mixer. Um, it's super flexible. Um, multiple um, inputs and outputs. I'm just looking through my um, uh, my notes. Yeah, 48 inputs. Um, you know, super low latency, like sub millisecond, well under a millisecond latency. Um, what I really appreciated was um, a full-on 64 by 64 uh, Dante interface. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I mean, you really uh, could use this as a kind of throw down mixer for an all Dante workflow mm -hmm. or combine and send stuff in and out of the Dante card from the analog IO on the, on the mixer. Um, it's a hell of a good mixer uh, in its own right. I mean, certainly if I were doing reality shows, um, this 
uh, you know, where I had a lot of inputs to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really good choice for a lot of that kind of work. Yeah, and um, we have a couple of people uh, using it in the field as is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it interfaces to their bigger consoles as well. So if you really had a very large control room um, and you needed to have throw down mixers for producers or something, um, this would be seamlessly integrated into the network. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, really amazing. So this particular model um, that you're looking at is $29.99. Mm -hmm. um, you know, without the option card. Um, oh yeah, and it's got like a whole USB ability to record um, record on the USB stick, uh, or it could be a USB interface to a computer, um, even without the Dante card. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really, um, really um, impressive stuff. Cool. And uh, what was the difference between the six and the seven? Is just the number of inputs. Yeah, they just they they grow. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the the I'm not sure how many inputs the six has and the seven has, but they they this is the They're sort more. of like this is the one I thought would appeal to the broadest number of our customers because it's the smallest form factor. Yeah. yeah, got it. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, let's let's move on to wireless. Um, so there were a lot of things um to come out in wireless and we'll talk about talent wireless a little bit um just mentioned that uh sony came yeah. out with their uh dwt b03r mm -hmm. which is a bit of a mouthful um but that's their new tiny transmitter um it's nice and silver and gasketed and, and all those things um sennheiser also came out with their sk6212 that's their super tiny transmitter for the 6000 series and uh, you know, recently I've heard, I've had the opportunity to hear both of those mm -hmm. in semi-controlled environments. They both sound amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. It's incredible. And the battery life in that Sennheiser transmitter is unbelievable. Something like 11 hours. Yeah, and I, I, from what I understood, the um, it transmits at 14 uh, milliwatts, but it uh, it has the range comparable to their larger systems. It, it does, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's impressive. Um, uh, Wizicom brought out their MTH410, uh, which is their new handheld, uh, mm -hmm. which is available now, and they're also starting to ship things in band eight, which is 900 megahertz for, for us over here in mm -hmm. the states. Mm -hmm. uh, Zaxcom released their uh, ZMT3 Extreme, uh, which is a slightly larger version of the ZMT3, um, and that features uh, longer battery life as well. So that's um, 12 hours on a single battery. And then the other thing, uh, the thing I wanted to talk a little bit about, which um, I was not expecting, was the the Sony UWPD series. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, it's it's basically an update for their series. It's almost exactly the same thing, uh, but the transmitter, receiver, the mono receiver, and the plug-on are all smaller. Uh, and then for programming, they really instead of using infrared on these. They act well. They they're using infrared, and they have the ability to use NFC. Um, so you can actually tap the uh, the transmitter on the receiver. It'll vibrate uh, and program itself, um, so it works perfectly uh, with no kind of confusion, no error, no trying to line up the lights or anything like that. Which right. I thought was pretty neat. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. That's a that's a cool system. Um, uh, you know, I remember seeing those at the debates. Um, I, when I was a volunteer kind of frequency cop. <laughs> and uh, those, I mean, the flexibility that those have uh, is really incredible just in terms of frequency assignments. And um, yeah, they, they work really well. Um, they are an, a particularly good choice if you're using the Sony cameras with the um, intelligent shoe. Right. Uh, you can see, if, you know, first of all, power and audio go th goes through the shoe and you can see the telemetry in the eyepiece and... Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a smart system. And they showed off a new shoe that interacts with uh, some of their cameras that will actually bypass uh, the the current shoes had D to A, mm -hmm. and then it would go A to D. <laughs> um, so the the current shoe or the new shoe goes just D D to D. So bypassing both of those A to D converters. Nice. Um, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of, uh, so that's Talent Wireless. Right. In, in terms of, uh, of IFBs, IFB, yeah. um, so a couple of really exciting ones that came out. Uh, Zaxcom's URX100. Mm -hmm. uh, that is pretty neat. If you want to tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I would love to. So, um, you know, the use case scenario that I will describe for this, mm -hmm. um, it's an IFB system that interfaces to a two-way radio. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that there's a lot of possibilities 
but the one that I have in mind is for boom operators and sound teams mm -hmm. to use, be able to use production radios for their talkback channel. Um, so, for example, uh, a third or boom operator um, can be listen, listening to material audio from the production mixer, mm -hmm. uh, talk back to them on a dedicated channel on the production's two-way radios um, via um, this uh, sort of microphone dongle here, which yep. has integrated push to talk. Um, the radio interfaces directly to the receiver. Mm -hmm. um, so you're hearing a mix of the radio's audio, the, um, the unit's audio. Um, and when you push to talk, you're talking into the radio. Um, yeah, it's really, really smart. And then also, obviously, once you have a production radio, you can also listen in on channel one, which so many shoots have so much information on channel one that they don't bother to tell the sound department. And then it's a giant guessing game. So I think the fact that this integrates all of that into one slick unit is really great. Yeah, yep. And you can't see it on this, but there's a TA5 connector on this side over here, and there would be an adapter that would go into any, like any a, yeah, production Like a Motorola CP200D, mm -hmm. or yeah, I mean, he's tested it with, Glenn has tested it with a bunch. Yep. Um, yeah. And then this lanyard plugs into this uh, TRS jack here, right. and then your headphones would plug in there, and there's the push stock and all that fun stuff. Right, and interestingly, you don't need the lanyard. Um, mm -hmm. Like it were, I think the lanyard's even an option. I think you, yeah, you still need the push to talk for it, I believe. Right, but so if you just want it to be an IFB, though. Right, that'll work. And it still works as a camera hop and with time code and the yes. display is mounted on the top and it's flippable, which I found out later. Oh, uh, nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, so if you're looking at it like this, you can have it facing towards you. If you've got it on camera, you can have it flip right, around. Right way around, yeah. Joe, That's you were raising your hand. I am raising my hand. Uh, Joe File has a couple questions about this. Uh, first one being, uh, can we clarify that in stereo audio mode, the time code is still... Uh, outputted from the TA5? I don't believe that's true. Um, I would have to get back to you on that, but I'm pretty sure that you still have to choose either or. Great. And he has another question on the URX. Is the headphone amp for the eighth inch output the same as the ERX? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we would have to we would have to find that out as well. We can. I do want to point out that this uh, headphone uh, this headphone is not the locking jack. Um, so it's not the same, at least mechanically, as the ERX-3. Mm. But thank you, Joe. And so we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, WYSICOM also came out with their MPR-50 IFB, mm -hmm. which is their wideband, very small, high-quality um, mono IFB receiver. And that's diversity, right? The, diversity, yeah. yep. Uh, and that'll be available soon, mm -hmm. uh, April or May. Uh, and then you talked to... Uh, a company called not the the company is not Digiter. It's the, Overline. 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 Overline yeah. and makes the product is is uh, Digiter. Uh -huh. So uh, this this is the, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. Okay. Um, I came across this company in at IBC I think way back in 2013, mm -hmm. um, maybe even earlier. Um, I mean they've been they've been around for a long time and this product has evolved. Mm -hmm. um, so what this product is is multiple in multiple out. Uh, discrete ear communications. Um, so, you know, the, the part that goes in the person's ear mm -hmm. um, is, you know, a bit bigger than what we're used to, than, mm -hmm. a, than a phone ac ear earpiece. Mm -hmm. um, but the way it works is fundamentally different. So first of all, you have um, a, a rack mount uh, receiver here, um, and that on the back has eight ins and eight outs. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll start with the input side of the equation. Um, you can talk to any one of eight um, talk paths, and there can be multiple receivers per um, talk path. Um, and what they talk to is a little belt pack. They talk to it via 5.8 gig access points. Mm -hmm. um, you can have virtually unlimited access points. Um, so think of, you know, access points, you would drop one wherever you had zones, or if you had a big zone, you might drop a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 5.8 gigs to the belt pack, and then it's, um, you know, very low latency, at APTX, uh, I believe, Bluetooth um, from the belt pack to the earwig. Uh, and so the whole system has, um, you know, within uh, two frames of latency, um, so not good for somebody on stage, but great if you need to talk to four or five judges on a reality show, for mm -hmm. example, in three or four zones, 
not that there's any, any limit on zones. Um, you can combine this with any um, four-wire intercom system or any, any intercom system with the right converters um, so that multiple producers can talk to multiple talents simultaneously. Um, the fidelity is much better than what we're used to. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think the uh, weaknesses of the current systems that we're used to, um, this kind of flips on its head and makes those strengths for this system. Um, so it's, it's really um, something that I'd like everybody to see. Speaking of which, um, this Monday and Tuesday, come, <laughs> come, come to Gotham Sound um, and, and check, it, check it out. We'll have um, representatives from Overline System here. Um, we'll have the system set up here at Gotham Sound. Um, we'll do a live stream about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's something that if you are involved in multi-stream, uh, a multi-zone, multi-talent mm -hmm. queuing, um, this is really compelling. Um, I don't have all the prices in front of me, but you know we've done the math, and after about five, um, you know, sort of like people to, that you need to talk to simultaneously, um, different, you know, with discreetly, yeah. um, this system makes economic sense. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, please, please uh, come and check out the Digitier system. Oh, I didn't even talk about the outputs. Oh, yeah, you said inputs. Oh, yeah, okay. so there are eight outputs, and each of these belt packs um, has uh, can be paired to an output. Um, so, you know, we were shooting with Corey Allen, and he was thinking, like, oh, well, like a stage manager type person or, mm -hmm. or an AD, um, they could actually take advantage of that fact, and so then they can kind of choose on the belt pack which talent to talk to directly, or they could talk to a common channel. Mm -hmm. um, there's GPIO available, so you can hook this into a two-way radio system. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a really impressive system, and you know certainly there's a lot of features to grow into. So yeah, come check it out. Cool. And then another thing that you saw was uh, Alteros. Yes. Um, so this is um, you know I believe they won uh, a 2019 award. I know they won an award last year. Uh -huh. um, this is really something that I, I think technically, you know, like I don't think we're dealers. In fact, I know we're not dealers present. Okay. So I just think this is cool technology. Uh -huh. um, uh, it sort of forces you to think about wireless fundamentally differently. Um, the packs, these are the packs. Mm -hmm. um, they're a bit bigger than what we would like. So, mm -hmm. so this is really for in, installed, think like a network installation, um, you know, some, somewhere along those lines where you have a facility that you have to wire up. Mm -hmm. um, those are the packs. Uh, these are the transceivers. Okay. Um, and you basically place uh, transceivers um, where you need coverage. This works at a very, very high uh, sort of, you know, way above, uh, above microwave or into microwave. I think it's 5.9 gigahertz. Okay. Um, uh, above Wi-Fi, certainly, mm -hmm. um, and it it works where these transceivers communicate to the base station. The base station has twenty four outputs. Uh, they are Dante or Maddie only. Okay, um, interesting. Which is interesting. Yeah, and they go via Cat five, not traditional like TCP IP kind of Cat five, mm -hmm. but their own Cat five to these transceivers. You can have a whole bunch of transceivers. Um, and then uh, these transceivers communicate with these uh, belt packs. The belt packs um, are all timed together. They're all tied together. And so they output like a very, very short and sort of measured a nanosecond burst of energy um, that indicates their audio. That is like a part of their audio um, huh. uh, signal. So uh, yeah, and they all work together. So this Instead of thinking in terms of number of, of transmitters, you just think that this can handle 24 um, of these belt packs. Wow. So yeah. So one 24-channel transmitter. Yeah. I mean, or trans, trans, <laughs> transception, transceiving system. Yeah. Uh huh. Sweet. Yeah. We have um, last year we did a video with the founder of the company, Jackie Green, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you should check it out if you're interested. Cool. Uh, all right. So let's move on to microphones. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about was something new from Sheps, not actually a new microphone, but a new parabolic dish, which I have never seen a parabolic dish like this. Um, so, you know, not particularly exciting to look at it. It does look like a dish. Um, but 
the material that they use is incredibly flexible. And by incredibly flexible, I mean it's designed to be rolled up. Um, like, like rolled up like a tent, like a sleeping bag, uh, like a shirt, like it's very, it's that flexible and it springs right back out. Um, so I thought that was very cool. Uh, the integrated, uh, you know, Ryko wind protection and the various, um, you know, socks and wind jammers that come with it are, are there. The handle I also thought was great with the isolation. Uh, it uses the Shep CCM capsules, and you can use different capsules to give yourself a different amount of directionality. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use Omni capsules, you can use cardioid capsules, um, and then you also get the benefit of of you having that Shep sound. Um, did, did you get a chance to hear it? Did not get a Me chance neither, to hear yeah. it. Me neither. Yeah. But it does. Uh, they also send it with a um, with a plug-in that will plug into any kind of uh, DAW mm -hmm. uh, to be able to EQ it. Um, to be able to EQ it in such a way that it sounds even better than than what it would come with raw. <laughs> so with a couple of presets and a couple of things designed to take away that parabolic -y sound. <laughs> um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, price is around $3,000 and it's going to be available soon. And $3,000 gets you... Includes the capsule. Includes, the, includes the, capsule. the capsule. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Um, a lot of other microphones came out. Sankin had, came out with the... Um, uh, I believe this is supposed to be the WMS50, mm -hmm. uh, which is a um, uh, which is an MS microphone designed for on camera on boom cool. uh, for 1750. Mm -hmm. uh, Ambio had this really crazy sports mic prototype, which um, it's just a prototype. And that's you, Sennheiser, right? Sennheiser, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, and it's uh, what is it had 31 8070s built into it, which was it was this big. It was wow. Huge. Um, but that, I, that allows them to track uh, something in real time, track a sound source in real time. Yeah, I believe what they said was they, they would set up four of those arrays around a soccer pitch and then use uh, location data of the ball mm -hmm. uh, and then be able to feed that into a processor to give them one signal of the ball being kicked. Wow. Yeah, so instead of having to do, oh, the mic's, you know, the ball's over here, let me bring up this microphone, It's this is... This is the ball microphone. <laughs> so it's experimenting and coming soon, but I thought it was cool. That's um, awesome. Voice Tech came out with a truly waterproof microphone designed to be submerged for up to 24 hours. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that was neat. Uh, Sony has their ECM90, which is an incredibly low um, cable noise right. microphone. Yeah. Uh, and then Deity had a lot of stuff, uh, <laughs> a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, they had their S Mic 2. Uh, which will be in black, but uh, that should be available this summer. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole idea, what what Andrew from Deity uh, told me was the whole idea behind their line was that everything would match. Um, so the S Mic 2 uh, 2S will sound like the S Mic 2. Their new pencil mic, even with all the different um, capsules, cardioid and omni and hypercardioid, will all have the same tonal quality, so they'll all blend together. Okay. Um, so that uh, that was what was important to them. The S Mic Two, um, very similar. The shorter interference tube, shorter back to be able to use um, to use indoors, and um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty decent sounding mic. We actually recorded some uh, the interview with that in different parts, so you can hear that in in action. Smart, good. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then more Deity stuff, we talk about their, uh, their lavaliers. They came out with two new lavaliers. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the current, uh, the current lav they offer, the Deity W lav. Uh, then you've got the, w, the w lav Pro, uh, which is smaller than the W lav. And then you've got the W lav Micro, um, which is even smaller. And the thing that I was impressed with um, about this is that uh, two things. They use a standard micro dot connector. Uh -huh. So you can use any kind of micro dot adapter that you want, right. uh, and it'll work with, let's say, the ZMTX if you were going to use a, a Zaxcom transmitter mm -hmm. or any of those transmitters that have built-in micro dot. They also b made the capsules um, the size of it to uh, the exact specifications to be able to use other manufacturers' accessories. Huh. So. Um, the WLAV Micro, for instance, uh, uses the same uh, the same concealers as um, I believe they said the the 6060 mm -hmm. or the um, the Sennheiser MK1. 
Uh -huh. uh, and I believe the WLOV Pro uses the same stuff as COS 11s. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool and pretty smart. Smart, yeah. Um, built in, you know, built in accessory base. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. And then with using the same capsule as the the WLOV Pro, uh, they have come out with their own headset mic, um, which they're calling headset for right now. So uh, <laughs> they're they're taking ideas for more creative names. Uh -huh. um, but uh, anyway, that's also available on their um, uh, on our website. Actually, listening to the headset. And you, Peter, were, right after we went to Deity, you were across the hall at Shore. Yes, um, the Twinplex. Mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, you know, this is really kind of an amazing um, product, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, uh, well, first of all, it's, it's Twinplex because it's got dual um, capsules inside, um, dual, dual membranes. Uh, they're, um, they're very, very quiet. Um, very durable. I don't know if, um, uh, I think we did a, a, uh, in our video, we have an insert of them, sort of like a machine they built to pull on oh, the cable. Oh, that's a crazy looking yeah, yeah. machine, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've been uh, using them in the prop mics for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we've been tasked with making them um, actually work, um, we'll rip the guts out of very old mics and put these in them in the production mixer. Matthew Price has been very happy with the sound of them. Um, but they just sound great. They're, they're going to come in a, a couple of different um, uh, models. Um, so the 45 has a very, very thin cable, something 1.1 millimeter, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, uh, 46 is going to be a, a more sensitive. Um, 47 is standard sensitivity. 48 is tailored for speech, um, which, you know, I think... I, I'm not sure. I'd be curious to know what the majority of our customers will do. I believe the flatter mics are, um, you know, my personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then the, a 50, a headset, which is their 53. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll have, these are shipping now. Um, you know, there's no shortage. We'll have demos um, soon. Um, they will be, of course, at Gotham Sound Expo. Um, so people can listen to it for themselves. Um, and yeah, they are available um, in a variety of terminations and, and um, colors. Yep. So really, uh, really good, good stuff. Cool. Yeah, and that, that machine, it was just all day, it was like <laughs> dropping a weight over and over cable. and over again on the cable. Yeah, uh, and you can listen to it too simultaneously, yep. listen yep. to the output of the mic. Yeah, it's great. Um, so for accessories to go along with that, we bumped into uh, some of the guys from uh, Viviana. Yep. And uh, we got to do a video with, with Turi, and Turi is one of the, the nicest guys uh, that there is. Mm -hmm. um, so check that out, because he's just he's such a happy guy. Um, and then uh, we also uh, got a chance to stop by with the, the folks from Bumblebee, with Powell and, uh, and Caleb. And they're also super nice. They've been doing a documentary uh, travel documentary in the U.S. while they were there. So they were in Death Valley. Oh, great. And uh, they were showing off some of their wind protection. And we got to do a nice video with them. Oh, that's a real live demo on how to uh, how to hide the new 6060, uh, oh. which their concealer is pretty it's small, uh, but it looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a lovely chat with Simon Bishi um, of Ursa. And yeah, he's, he's, uh, they're, they're all going to be on board with um, making accessories for the Twinplex. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Cool. Um, so other accessories for the for the big uh, for the big mics. Um, K Tech debuted a whole new line of boom poles that they're mm -hmm. calling the uh, K Tech Classic Pro or Pro Pro Classic. I think I hope they just call it the Pro. Um, but uh, I like I thought these were pretty cool because they they change a lot of things about the K Tech pole, but still maintain the same greatness. Quality, yeah. yeah. Um, so carbon fiber is the same, but uh, new collars um, to give you even better grip. Yep. Um, the top comes off, which I thought was pretty neat. So now you can field service and field replace cables easily. Without soldering. Yeah, yeah without soldering. Just give me a new one. Now, the, the, it's because the um, base is thicker. It's got a, it's got right. a larger yeah. diameter sort of first section exactly so apparently the first section uh the first section of the new pole is going to be equivalent to the second section of the old pole mm -hmm. they're also adding another section um so the whole pole is going to be a little bit thicker but that allows it to collapse down further right. so they've had, they've turned it into a six section pole nice uh, and they're going to come out with 
three flavors of the classic and then another articulated pole in this version <laughs> um, to make it uh, to make it go. So I thought that was really nice. And a shout out to John Paul Glasky for uh, sending us that picture that we're using there at the bottom. Oh, nice. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, JP. I mean, John Paul. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So that was cool. And uh, oh, and they're, they're going to have a new right angle connector and they're revamping the coiled cable for the inside of that. Yeah, it's really a great, it's, it's a good design and it's completely serviceable and, mm -hmm. and um, it, uh, they will sell it to us uh, and presumably any dealer, but they'll sell it in just as a connector, Yeah, which is great. Um, one of the other really exciting things, this is not so much for uh, exciting for your sound equipment, but exciting for your back. Yes. Um, this was the Orca 3S, also known as the OR444. Um, and this harness, uh, did you get a chance to try it on? I didn't, no. It, I heard it's got like an exoskeleton kind of. Yeah, It's so it, it's got a... a like a really, really rigid spine. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part is not about the rigid spine. Um, I mean, that's part of it, but it wouldn't work if it didn't have this bottom part. And it's got, um, you can't see it, but there are, oh, here it is. There's these twists here. So what you do is you put the harness on and you put it around your waist and then you tighten it around your waist. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of bend over to lock it in. Um, and then you lock the, the spine into place and the actual harness kind of levitates above your shoulders. Hmm. So the bag, when you clip into it, it'll sag a little bit, but, um, but it's levitating above your shoulders and everything is going through uh, here and going into the rigid spine uh, so that it's all sitting on your waist. Wow. Yeah, so that was, it was pretty, um, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I got to use it, you know, we, we didn't have the heaviest audio bag uh, at NAB, but I did get to use it with our audio bag. Uh huh. Um, yeah, it works. It, it works. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a few um, stands that I saw where they were specializing in people's mixers and camera people's health. Yeah. Um, which is a good thing to see. Yes. Yeah. We definitely. Um, you know, people have been running around with heavy things since the Nagra and the twelve D cells, and you know, busted vertebrae as a result. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. It's one disturbing thing at Gotham is to see broken backs, yeah. mixers with broken backs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is a good, this is a great option. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so heading back to wireless a little bit, mm. um, uh, I guess we'll start out with WYSICOM's new uh, ADFA antenna, which is really their regular antenna, their regular Omni antenna with a built-in amplifier. Yeah. Can we, um, I just want to take a moment to talk about this line of, of antenna and because there's this in the LFA uh -huh. um, antenna which share this kind of amplifier part. Yep. Um, the exciting thing is not the amplification, um, it is the filtration on mm -hmm. it um, where you can really dial into a very, I think it's 40 megahertz passband filter um, and, and that really, um, I mean it just tr you know translates to more range. There's very few things that I would feel comfortable saying that about wireless, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that you, it's like a, definitely you see more range. By filtering out all the crap your receiver doesn't need to deal with, um, or most of the crap, um, you really are doing yourself a huge benefit. Yeah. Um, so I, I really, I have to recommend this line. And it's also got um, cool features. Uh, the, the LFA, the directional one, has an articulating, um, you know, uh, uh, connector, mm -hmm. uh, and also, it's got a relay in it. Um, so, so if you passive. lose power, mm -hmm. it becomes passive. Yep. Yeah, and this will do that too. This is the same filter, mm -hmm. just a different form factor. And I think that you know, I, I've always been a big proponent of when you're doing uh, wireless, if you can, you know, if your antennas are going to be very close to each other, having one, one of one type and one of another type to give you a different look. I don't know, diversify. <laughs> All right. Um, That's the, yeah, I mean, that is the f amazing thing about RF is, you know, what works is often, um, is, is only what works, really. Right, I mean, yeah. It's, so, yeah, good. Um, all right, so moving on to the Electro M2C. Um, yeah. It's their new antenna combiner designed to go with the M2Ts, um, but also will work with any of their 100 milliwatt transmitters. Uh-huh. So you can have eight uh, eight. Transmitters plugged in, 
Uh, there, these green LEDs here will um, show you signal, mm -hmm. um, so they'll light up. Uh, and I mean, it's just a, another thing for that line, or really will work as any uh, as an antenna combiner for anybody that needs a lot of transmits and wants to go to one antenna. Yeah, it's uh, super useful. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so you saw a lot of RF over fiber stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think that we could, I would say that that was one of the themes mm -hmm. um, or sub-themes of NEB. Yeah, we'll start out with RF venues. Um, yeah, uh, this is their third um, iteration of, the RF, of their RF over fiber line. Um, it's, it takes DC in um, and they come in pairs. So this is the uh, transmitter. Um, which the transmitter means that it's basically taking RF in mm -hmm. and then transmitting optically out. Uh, and the, the pair that goes along with it would be called the receiver, which takes the fiber optic in and then transmits RF to the receivers. Mm -hmm. It's kind of confusing nomenclature, but that's the way yep. it goes. Um, you know, I think we're all hoping that this technology will be a no-brainer direct replacement for coax, ca coax cable. I do not think we are there yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in terms of um, price points, I think uh, this is a, a, a solid entry-level performer. Um, and I think it's, it's super flexible in the sense that you have gain control. And I think the issue, as I understand it, is that the, there's a limited dynamic range in the fiber optic transmitter itself. Um, so for example, uh, if you were to just directly replace it with coax, all of the RF energy that your antenna sees now has to get translated to light. Uh -huh. um, and because the RF, the fiber transmitter has a limited dynamic range, you may very easily overload that. And so that's where you get into situations where you're adjusting the gain, um, and sometimes uh, you then get into the noise floor of the system itself. Um, I think personally that pairing these with those filtered antennas is a great way to go because now you're limiting the amount of RF energy that this mm -hmm. will see. Um, and so, you know, that also means you have to coordinate properly and band plan properly and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, so whereas you might be able to get away with stuff with coax, um, and in some ways in those instances, the loss of the coax might help you, um, now you really do have to be careful um, and, and really think about it. And I think that's true of all the systems we saw. Yeah. So yeah, um, terrific. Uh, this is a, a, a uh, terrific system. Um, I'm looking to see if we have um, prices. I don't. Know. Oh, it says uh, twenty nine ninety five and shipping now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's and that's for the pair and and, yeah. and you would need a pair of pairs as it were for diversity. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, then um, we also saw professional wireless systems um, system, mm -hmm. which is um, I think uh, a kind of step up. Um, in a way, you know, I think you can see, well, you, if you, if we, these were three dimensional, four pin XLRs for the DC input, mm -hmm. um, you know, and um, uh, yeah, I think it, it's a, a slightly more solid specs. Um, whereas the RF venue unit, you had rotary controls for gain, you know, like a hex switch. Mm -hmm. um, this you pre program with USB or you can program on site with a USB laptop, um, all of its gain settings. You know, Neither system is a is a replacement for coax. Right. Um, this one is a little bit more. I actually don't have those notes in front of me. Do you do you see the thirty one hundred for the pair? Thirty one hundred yeah, for the pair. Yeah. Yep. So not that far off. Coming soon. Yeah, no. coming soon. Yeah, they're they're. Um, I think they said summerish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, and then uh, there are a bunch of things for RF distribution. Uh, Professional Wireless had a had a new line uh, that featured quadversity for some of the shore stuff. Yes, uh, and also just some some simplification to do uh, you know a couple of zones in and then sixteen out. Yeah. Um, uh, Wizicom. Oh, I was going to say our venue. I was going to go Wizicom first just because it's, sure. it's similar, but mm -hmm. uh, Wizicom has their SPL two sixteen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then RF, uh, RFNU. Yeah, RFNU, I really, uh, I thought that was really clever. They have a uh, slightly different topology for splitting it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so you, they uh, split in, in groups of three, so you end up with nine outputs per diversity side, um, which is very interesting, which um, is, is less splits than, than other units. 
But what was really exciting to me is the inclusion um, of an RF Explorer like system of their wave tower, right. basically. Yeah. Um, and so you install this, um, and, and the way they're kind of skewing it is that it would be more for installations, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be. Um, but you, you basically have a record in the cloud, um, live and historical, of the RF that, that flows through this device. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in terms of troubleshooting um, a current situation or looking over a past situation, um, all of the RF activity uh, is logged into the cloud, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. And it's integrated into your antenna system, so it's not like you've got a separate scanner, it's, it's live in your system. It's there, yeah. 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 Um, right now, it needs to talk to the cloud. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, and I'm encouraging that uh, they'll have a version that is, is um, you know, local, mm -hmm. either via Bluetooth or some other technology. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then Lectrosonics, um, just to go back to antennas for a second, mm -hmm. Lectro has their ALP690, uh, which is their tunable uh, antenna version, which was you know, made to look and act a lot like all the other Electro antennas, but it has that tunable filter that if it loses power, will go passive, which so that's their latest flagship antenna. And tunable how? Uh, I believe it's, I, I don't know the exact step size, but it's, um, but it does have a smaller step size as well. So similar to the LFAs. To, to like with a filter? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's talk about some of the other audio technology. Um, so Ambient came out with their new locket. Yes. So the ACNCL, mm -hmm. um, which was great. It's barely larger than Nano Locket, mm -hmm. um, so which is one of the smaller timecode boxes out there. Um, but it features the same um, timecode and sync uh, output. It has a screen, uh, which I thought was pretty great. Um, and it, it runs on a, uh, on a rechargeable battery, uh, runs on an NP50 battery. Mm -hmm. So similar to those using in the ZMT or the SSM. User replaceable? User replaceable, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, and it can charge it as well. Nice. Um, so I thought that was a, a great addition to their line and they're actually, they're dis they discontinued the tiny locket because this is smaller um, and the, the older locket because this does all the same things. Oh, nice. Um, so, and this is, um, what is it? It's uh, $500 at the moment um, for pre-order, or it can it'll go up to $600 if you um, if you get it after it comes out. So there's an incentive to to pre-order. Huh. Yeah, um, I was very excited to see Ambient's MetaSleep. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know this really had its origins um, at our visit in to IBC. Um, I mean, you remember. You were there. Yeah. Uh, this was what, 2005? Six. Six, yeah. yeah. Um, it was us and Chris Price and Klaus and all those guys, Sebastian, and we were sort of dreaming about what um, is possible. And every year since then, we'd say, well, it's now 2008, it's now 2010, mm -hmm. it's now 2019. We should not be entering metadata into individual devices. It should be shared across the whole set. Mm -hmm. um, enter once, share amongst all the devices. Uh, and that's what this promises. Um, you know, one metadata entry that's shared amongst your sound recorder, your camera, your slate, and then gets wrapped up into reports that are automatically sent to the editors in the production office. Yep. Um, all from a single entry um, that, uh, that your script supervisor, your camera department, and your production office and editor, editing office all share. It's fantastic. Yeah. And it's a reality. We saw it working. We saw the, the proof of concept working. And the, uh, the amazing thing is that uh, Klaus was talking about this promises to save on an average episodic two hours a day of editorial time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, you know, paper reports are a pain in the ass. The mm -hmm. fact that um, because it's automatically entered and corrected, yep. uh, you know, I fill in on sets occasionally and it's always, it tickles me when the script supervisor asks me, you know, how many takes are there for a certain shot or like, or, you know, do we agree on what the next slate is going to be? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the sound, de sound department that's really driving the metadata now. So to have this really um, be able to work and then have the script riser work off that same, be in sync with the script riser, and then that feeds the camera, camera generates the ALE, that all gets imported. Um, you know, 
I am a little bit selfish uh, in the sense that that's great that it saves production a few hours uh, a day, and I believe it. Um, but it also means that my notes have a fighting chance of getting into the right person's yeah, eyes. That's a good point. Um, and that is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so let's move on to, uh, to Dante. Yeah. And so you got to spend a lot more time with the Dante stuff than I did. So uh, I'm going to listen. Well, all right. So I guess uh, if we'll go in order, audio science will be first. Um, yeah. So this is a, a, a very interesting company. They mm -hmm. are the people behind the people. Um, you know, they're, they're usually not customer facing um, unless you're a radio station, in which case you know them very well. Um, but their technology is in a lot of products. And they have a series of remote-controlled microphone preamp to Dante converter and line level, and, and Dante to line level converters in the same mm -hmm. 1RU box. Um, what uh, is new and sexy for this year is uh, that there used to be those um, kind of Euro connectors oh, yeah. That, yeah, um, that were on the back, which um, was fine for install and frankly OK, but um, not standard. Now they have DB25 options. Oh, cool. What they've always had, and what really drew my interest, is 12 volt power. Uh -huh. So uh, now they make a couple of different versions 8x8, 16x16, 32x32. But for example, the new Sound Devices recorder, paired with their 16x16, now all running 12 volts, you have 32, the possibility of 32 microphone inputs to Dante. Um, plus, because Sound Devices is committed to this open protocol, um, MCU protocol, uh, so is Audio Science. Um, their protocol is a little bit different, but, but it is trivial to convert MCU to their protocol. Um, so now you could have one control surface control the gains on their box, controlling the Sound Devices. Oh, wow. Really, I mean, I think it's very special. I also think that, um, and I showed this in Atlanta, you could um, make a little PoE converter for their box. Mm -hmm. And if you have, let's say, uh, eight radio mics, um, you don't want to run tons of coax, you can run one Cat5 uh, to their box. And PoE, it'll power over that same Cat5, mm -hmm. power their box, power the radio receivers. And you have like an instant kind of throw down remote control um, audio station. And you can even get Comtex, you know, for, on the output of this box or whatever I, IFP system you're using. Um, so, I mean, it's super flexible. Fidelity is fantastic. Um, yeah, and open, open control protocol, open API. Cool. Uh, yeah, so very exciting. All right. Um, and then my, you know, my also, uh, my personal favorite is Glenn Sound. Um, yeah, I, you know, there's so many, uh, so much products to go through. I don't uh -huh. know how they keep it straight, let alone us. Uh -huh. um, but anyways, they have these little two-channel throw-down boxes built super ruggedly, um, you know, PoE-powered. Like, they have, uh, these are two analog ins. They also have two, a uh, two pairs of AES in and out. Mm -hmm. You know, basically any way that you can think of to use the Ultimo chip, um, which is that 4x4 four four Dante internal chip, mm -hmm. they've done in a rugged enclosure. Um, and it's, it's really just high quality stuff. It's great stuff. There's um, sort of like delightful um, little interface uh, things that they do just because it's very clear. Um, I think they, they design a lot of products for the BBC and it's very clear that they have a close relationship to the end users. Hmm. Um, and so you see a feature and it occurs to you that occurs to me that only somebody that uses these products came up with that idea. Um, and that the design engineers at Glen Sound are able to implement it. Um, uh, there, what, what else? What other pictures do we have? Do we have the? Um, yeah. Oh, that this was is, that's funny. So you know, <laughs> this is so lovely. Gavin um, was the the managing director that we interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, he had to come up with a turntable to Dante converter for YouTube. Um, <laughs> But, you know, Glen Sound has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Gavin's dad that was the previous managing director. Uh, Gavin said he actually had to ask his father, like, all the best ways to implement an RIAA curve for turntables. Uh -huh. um, but there it is. Uh, so, anyways, I don't think it's apl applicable to our customers, maybe one or two. You want to um, start DJing on set over Dante? Over Dante. Uh -huh. But <laughs> uh, it is really just a it, lovely product to it's see. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. 
Um, what else do we have from them, Jared? What uh, other products? That's it for Glen Sound uh, Studio Technologies uh, uh, Esports. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, so this is another uh, company um, that really clearly is dialed into their end users. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they make a whole bunch of fiber converters and stuff and, and two-way radio stuff, uh, two-way intercom stuff and two-wire intercom stuff that we use, mm -hmm. um, but they have a bunch of stuff that's really applicable to reality television and even like video village director card type situations. Um, basically, uh, they have intercom over Dante boxes and commentary boxes. Um, this one is particular to the um, eSports market, um, part of which is uh, because they've designed it to be um, compatible with gaming headsets. Mm. Which oh, cool. doesn't necessarily only apply to esports, right? Those gaming headsets are actually pretty decent quality in terms of communications tools. Some of them are. Yeah. Um, and the fact that this sort of directly works with them is fantastic. Um, we have the 348 handy. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, and this is um, a, a box. Uh, you know, multiple control, multi-control, um, you can talk and listen to multiple channels, again, sort of compatible with eSports headsets, um, you know, can really be the basis of um, Dante, uh, intercom over Dante, mm -hmm. and, you know, gooseneck or headset. Um, yeah, some, some, just some smart stuff. Yeah. Um, check out the videos that we did of both um, Glen Sound and Studio Technology, actually all of the vendors. Um, to really learn uh, more in detail. Um, carts. Carts, yeah. Carts was the other theme, I think. Well, so I, I saw three themes. Uh -huh. Carts, um, RF over fiber, uh, and health. Uh -huh. um, you know, maybe somehow all related to kind of reducing weight. Sure. Um, or, or moving weight. Um, Nebtech, which uh, I, you know, if you're into upright carts, I think Nebtech is, uh, it is fair to say, is the Cadillac of upright carts. Uh -huh. um, okay. with Cadillac options, um, you know, you really have to check out the, um, the video. But, you know, basically, um, again, they're very close to their end users. So there's lots of little delightful features like masts, antenna masts. Yeah, and, the antenna masts are, are yeah, awesome. Yeah, just really great. And the folding shelves that pop off, um, this is all modular. The top and the bottom come apart and neither are required, so if you have a rack case for the bottom or vice versa. Um, they've also got an option for the top, which is a rack case you can put like radio receivers. It's really just smart, smart stuff. Yeah. And um, I think we we're also both fans of the innovative. It was very innovative. Yeah, uh, nice carts for sure. Uh, so yeah, innovative. Um, well, you, you talk about innovative. Well, the, the thing that's cool about the innovative cart, first of all, they're super jazzed about, um, about sound people at the moment. So. Um, <laughs> You know, they were really excited to talk to us and find out what it is that we thought that we wanted. So that's always it's always nice to feel wanted, um, and uh, and you know they're open to end user feedback as well. But the cool thing, <clears throat> particularly about the the Voyager, is that this cart can uh, can completely disassemble and fold down into a, a fifty pound briefcase. Yes, um, on wheels in about five minutes. Which, if you've ever had a like take a cart over on a plane mm -hmm. or, you know, travel quickly to a, a distant location, like a very distant location, that is a super handy feature. Yeah. I mean, you can even at baggage claim reassemble it without any tools. Right. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. So you can, yeah. you can walk in with all your stuff on the cart, throw the bags on there and then break it down and, and, uh, and check that too. Yeah. And I think that was, um, that was pretty cool. And it's, um, you know, they have different options in terms of the wheels. So they have some lighter wheels, they have some more rugged wheels. You're talking about custom making their wheels, uh -huh. really high end stuff. Yeah. It's really, it's pretty nice. Um, and yeah, you just get the, the feeling that it's all done with a lot of care. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're well known as camera carts. Uh, yeah, and now it's it's exciting to see them turn their attention to our market. Yeah, our our camera person, um, who is a sound person, uh, ordered one right before going to um, going to NAB and is is calling it uh, Cardi B. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, uh, I take no responsibility for yeah. that joke either. <laughs> well, but hold on. But so we would walk. We were walking around the show, and uh, without going to Innovative, he was like, "Oh, look." There's Cardi B, and there's Cardi B, and there's Cardi B, and it's really it's a, a cart that's pretty pervasive in the industry. Yeah. So um, as as Cardi B 
takes over uh, the hip hop world, who I used to work with, by the way. Um, Cardi B is uh, is taking over the film world. So there you go. Um, and so th- uh, there's a note here that says call to action. I have no idea what that means. Oh, um, that is Joe Chaudelli. Um, so uh, we uh, were filming a completely unrelated segment, and I saw Joe uh, leaving the Sennheiser booth, uh-huh. and I pulled him aside, and I said, Joe, is there anything while we have this all set up that you want to tell our viewers about in terms of... Uh, I should... Uh, Mentioned that Joe is head of spectrum management for Sennheiser USA. Hmm. Um, And I said, is there anything you want to tell our viewers about spectrum management issues? And he said, well, I do. And what he talked about is really a fascinating um, issue that's uh, before the FCC right now, which is should we be harmonized um, with international governing bodies in terms of frequency allocation um, for wireless microphones Hmm. and comms? And of course, I would... Think we all think the answer is yes. I, I can't imagine yeah. uh, people would disagree with this. Um, I will leave political discussions aside. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, imagine being able to travel the world. How many calls do we deal with? I'm going to such and such country. What radio mic frequencies are good there? So the before Congress is a um, a plan. Um, I guess initially proposed by the International Telecommunications Union to harmonize. Uh, these regulations so mm-hmm. that those issues um, become issues of the past. Um, go to Sennheiser USA's website um, for more information. I think it's SennheiserUSA.com slash spectrum. Um, and yeah, uh, definitely uh, uh, you have the ability to communicate with your legislators and, and tell them how you feel about this issue. And given uh, the the changes to the spectrum that, that have just happened and, and the the fallout from that, people having to change their wireless and spend a lot of money, um, good to be involved early, uh, early as, as yes. early as you can. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I think that was it. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, that was, it seemed, it was a lot. It, it was, was a lot. Yeah. Thanks for sticking in there if you made it this far. Yeah. I don't know how long we're, what, what uh, run time are we at now, Joe? We're about an hour and five minutes. Oh, and, uh, Joe, that'll be mad. 53 products we've talked about. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions? Uh, no, everybody needs a break. Okay, uh, great. But uh, oh, yeah. Most importantly, come to our seminar. It's not a seminar. It's a it's an expo. Uh, May the fourth, Gotham mm-hmm. Sound Expo. Yeah. Uh, Eleven to four p.m. We'll have workshops. All of the manufacturers, I think, or most of the manufacturers mm-hmm. that we've spoken about, will be there showing their wares, um, and you will be able to interact with them and talk to the manufacturers and interact with the products. And there'll be food. Uh, yeah. Punch what, and pie. what truck are we getting this time? It's a secret. Oh, We're getting a secret a truck. A secret truck. Yes. Cat food truck. We're not eating the truck, are we? I don't know yet. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, and yeah, thanks to the crew. Have a great day, everybody.